Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jane Green from Enterprise Ireland in our Dusseldorf office, and I'd like to welcome you to this webinar this afternoon on challenges, opportunities, and trends for travel tech companies with a focus on Southern Europe. I'm delighted to welcome my colleagues to the webinar today. Um, Maura Walsh, who's a senior VP of Digital Technologies based in our San Francisco office. Sarah Bonami, who is a market advisor in our Milan office. And a very, very warm welcome to Sinead Finn, who is CEO and founder of Affinity. And many of you on the call today will know Sinead. So the background really to this webinar is um, we started to engage with Sinead a couple of months ago, and the plan was that um, Sinead is a, a travel tech market expert, and we really wanted to understand, given the size of the travel industry in Southern Europe, what opportunities there were for Irish companies. Now, obviously, the world six months ago looked very different, and uh, the travel sector has really been changed upside down has been turned upside down. So what we were speaking about uh, six months ago probably is not relevant today. However, we thought it would be opportune to share with you the findings of uh, the research that was conducted by Sinead to really understand what is the state of the nation? What does the travel industry look like in Southern Europe at the moment? Are there opportunities due to the change in the industry? And if there are opportunities, where are they and how do we pursue those? So we're really looking forward to hear what Sinead has to say about this today. And following Sinead's presentation, we will then be speaking to Moira Walsh, who's our senior VP and head of travel tech at Enterprise Ireland. And she has wonderful relationships to the industry is talking on a daily basis to the hotels, to the airlines, and she really has her ear to the ground. So Maura is going to share with us today what the dynamics are in the industry and um, what we should be doing in preparation for what is to come and potentially what the future could look like for us. So after each presentation, you'll have the opportunity to ask um, questions. We'd encourage you to do so. Um, and then at the end of uh, the presentation, when this is finished, we will be sending out a copy of the presentation and the findings from Sinead to you. And any questions that haven't been answered, we will do our best to do so. So I know there's a lot of stuff to be covered today. Um, so without further ado, um, I'm going to pass you over to Sinead. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jane. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, and thank you to Enterprise Ireland for all the support um, they've offered to me during uh, the course of this um, project that we worked on together. I very much enjoyed it. I'd like to welcome um, all our listeners. I know some of you I have spoken to and you know who you are during the course of this uh, research project. So um, hopefully you'll enjoy what you see. Okay. So where now? We are living in very uncertain times, um, especially in the travel industry. And um, I'm speaking with uh, airlines on a daily basis, and they are very much grasping with um, survival. Um, but that doesn't mean it's all over. Next slide. Can we move on to the next slide, please, Lisa? Lisa? Hello. So I don't think Lisa can hear me. Um, okay, there we go. Um, Italy. So the three markets that we looked at um, and that I specifically looked at were Italy, France and Spain. And what I found that in Italy, there are 60 million charming, clever people. It's the third largest economy in the Eurozone, the fifth in Europe by number of airline passengers. What we need to do in this marketplace is be adaptive, open-minded, and equally creative when working at with Italians. They are very, very creative people. Um, during my time at Ryanair, I spent the first four years in this marketplace, um, starting up Ryanair's roots, 
And what I found about them was they were incredibly open to doing business and they're very creative in how they work certain clauses within the contracts um, in order to ensure that there can be growth and development in their marketplace. They're not at all restrictive um, about um, any part of business or business development. It is key in this uh, marketplace to be able to speak Italian. Um, absolutely essential. Uh, unlike other markets, um, it is absolutely essential in Italy. Why I say it is essential is because if you're with an Italian and you can speak their language, they are so impressed by the fact that somebody has taken the time to learn their language, um, especially as it's a language not spoken outside of Italy. And so they're so impressed by that. And it does help when building relationships. They're big family people. There's a lot of um, similarities between the Irish and Italians and um, the first question they'll ask you is how your family is and where you go where you're going on your holidays that's very common um, in Italian business they'll take you for a coffee so it's very important not to feel in any way just feel open um, when you're doing business in Italy because they're very open characters very similar to uh, the Irish people and moving on to the next slide thank you um, Spain 47 million inventive, proud and talkative people. Tourism in Spain contributes 10 to 11% of Spain's GDP. Obviously, um, that has changed with the current climate, but we do expect things to return in the travel industry. Mallorca is a major tech cluster for tourism companies from all over the world. This was one of the, I think, main discoveries, is that rather than being focused on, you know, all the regions in Italy. Actually, if you look to Mallorca and you look to Barcelona and Madrid as being your first places to start doing business, um, you'll get off to a very good start there. I'm sure many of you are aware um, that Mallorca is a tech cluster and you can see many, many different businesses uh, very, very quickly um, by going there. Building relationships is key, absolutely key in those marketplaces, as it would be anywhere else. But they're very keen on relationships and they take relationships very seriously. It's not just uh, professional. Um, then, and they like to speak English, of course. The Spanish like to speak English. They like to uh, learn and show that they know the English language also. Moving on to next slide, France. So France, 65 million quick, imaginative and culture rich people. It's the fifth largest economy in the world. Travel and tourism represents 9.7% of GDP. In this market, earning respect is the key to success. And you need to be patient and think long term. I think of all the markets I looked at, France is probably the one that would be the most challenging um, for, for any, it doesn't matter whether you're Irish or from any other uh, country, they do things uh, very, very well themselves and like to see themselves as innovators. So the next slide. Market trends, travel market trends. The economic collapse is only just beginning. To be honest, when I started to do this report, um, COVID was only just beginning. It was the beginning of March. We felt it was very much an Italian problem at the beginning of March. And little did we all realize um, that it was going to hit the rest of us as well. We don't really know, to be honest, whether this is the beginning, the middle or the end. Um, I think we'd like to hope that it is the middle um, for our industry, but we do know that bounce back is going to be slow. What I've noticed from speaking with many um, airlines and hotel, larger hotel companies and OTAs and um, online travel agents is that they have very much decided that they have to cope with what they have today um, and it is imperative to survive. Therefore, you know, there's no hiding under a carpet that we are, we are where we are and we must live with the situation that we're living in. What most airlines are hoping is that governments will reduce uh, or stop bringing, implementing 24-hour notice about travel restrictions, which is making uh, life very difficult for airlines. Um, another thing that airlines have noticed is that the demand um, patterns have completely changed. It's of no surprise to everybody on this call that the business traffic is just completely tanked and um, the focus is very much on leisure. 
I was speaking to Pegasus yesterday and they're a Turkish based airline and they have had three very, very positive financial years. Um, so they're able to overcome uh, this in ways that other airlines simply won't be able to, but their focus is on domestic traffic and the Italian lira is quite low. So it does pose this challenges everywhere, um, you know, but the hope is that leisure will return corporate budgets, which we just discussed, are going to be completely uh, slashed because, of course, not alone do we have a health problem, but we also have um, an economic problem, um, you know, very much coming our way once people come off furlough um, and once the reality starts to hit home. Uh, leisure travel holds the key to survival for our industry. Um, there's something else I would like to add to that, though. I also believe that um, new technologies, many new technologies. Um, I've even heard of one just yesterday uh, talking to somebody in Silicon Valley and there are some new technologies coming out that are going to help um, the travel industry um, to deal with COVID. What they are, I don't know yet um, because I'm a judge and I wasn't, uh, I wasn't able, it's on the lion's den with airline information and I wasn't, they weren't telling me what the ideas were, um, but there are ideas coming out and I would encourage um, people to think that way, all of you to think that way. It's going to be at least three years before air travel passengers are back to 2019 levels, unfortunately. Okay. Any positives? Okay. So there are always positives. Yes, of course there are positives. For those who weather the storm, we will reap the benefits. Travel growth is going to be exponential over the next three years because, of course, everything's grinded to a halt. Lufthansa just announced yesterday that they've only uh, carried 10% of the normal volume that they would carry um, in the month of August. So there's only one way um, from there, and that's growth. Uh, technology and innovation will be the key to survival and the industry has survived and adapted before and it will. Admittedly, we've never seen anything like COVID. Uh, I don't think you could compare 9-11 or Ash Cloud or anything else uh, this industry has seen to COVID, um, but I'm confident that we will return. Next slide. Yeah, thanks. Um, more, most accessible opportunities. So. What I found from, I spoke to many, many um, companies um, who are based in Spain, France, and Italy, and the findings were as follows. So the desire to build a connected trip is still very strong. Technology which helps to drive revenue is key at the moment. So any of you who have any sort of technology that helps um, the industry to drive revenue, um, you're sure to succeed. OTAs are looking to fix customer service and make it less manual. Many OTAs had a nightmare um, because airlines have different policies and procedures for customer service. And of course, OTAs were not able to handle all the change, you know, the changes. I mean, they handled it, but not as well as they might have liked to. So they are looking in this area. Payment methods and fraud are very high on the agenda. There's been an increase in fraud since um, we've all been working from home and this is something that travel companies are intent to get right. Effective marketing to get the industry back on track and um, positive uh, words. NDC in one order, which is still um, powering on ahead. Software to manage desk allocation, video conferencing and security for home workers. While not directly travel related, um, many of the travel companies are looking for a fix in this area. So how do you as client companies position yourselves? The focus has to be on the center of excellence for technology. So many of the businesses that I talk to uh, would like you to not just go as a salesperson um, to meet with them, but also to bring your tech um, person with you so that you can get, get going from the offset and any questions can be answered. I think what's really key is knowing the entry points. Um, many of us spend, and I'm included in that um, because I do what you do. Um, I go to airlines and travel companies and I try to develop business um, for um, companies such as yours. And it's very, very important to get to the right person as quickly as possible. And how to do that really is to use all the resources that you have 
obviously um, in the markets um, if we speak about Italy for example SAR is a great um, uh, focal point for you in terms of getting to the right people as quickly as possible she knows a lot of people um, building value in your product um, that has become key that's one of the thing that, things that all the travel companies are doing at the moment they're all building value in the product so instead of focusing on how much can I get for my product it's how much value can I bring uh, to my, my uh, customer with the product that I have? And now that maybe there's perhaps a bit more time, you know, what could I develop more that's going to bring extra value? Um, need to be patient in our industry. Um, a lot of you probably know this already, but it can take two to three years to conclude a deal. That does surprise people um, initially, but it is the case. Uh, it's, we don't really move at a very fast pace. I think tech companies are used to moving at a very, very quick pace. And it's difficult to understand how you know, airlines and travel operators uh, are not inclined to move as quickly, unless of course they're OTAs and uh, therefore then tech businesses themselves. Be on the ground, this is really, really key, is being on the ground. You can't really do much, um, you know, from just from Ireland. And I don't mean, you know, at the moment, obviously, with restrictions in place and everything, it's difficult to travel. So I don't mean you personally be on the ground. What I mean is have somebody really good on the ground, have somebody really good in the Italian market, if that's your focus, or in France or Spain, if they're your focus areas. The other key thing, which I noticed, uh, which I notice um, that many people don't actually tend to, um, present when they first meet an airline or a travel company is the commercial model because quite frankly being on the other side of the table when I was at Ryanair all I was interested in is what this meant for me commercially and by that I, I mean how much it's going to cost me or how much it's going to make me so make those as clear as possible um, in your in your presentations remove the tech barrier um, and how you do that is just by bringing your tech people into the meeting bring your top your CTO whoever it is into the meeting and get through all of that as quickly as possible okay next slide Lisa key players so I don't think this is any surprise to any of you the key players are the airlines the OTAs the hotels transport providers the GDS and mega tech firms and the corporate and other. And these are the businesses that I interviewed in coming to the conclusions uh, that I've come to in the report. Um, we do have a more detailed list um, of these companies, um, which I'm sure Enterprise Ireland will be happy to share with you by market. So who's in Italy, who's in Spain and who's in France that you can connect with um, to get you started in those markets. So the supply capability of the Enterprise Ireland client companies. So what do you have you know, to bring to them? Um, and all of the client companies which I interviewed have a viable and quality product for all the markets, not just for uh, one individual market, but for all markets. Um, flexibility is key. Agility is very, very important. Um, the willingness to work in the in, in the target markets. What I found here actually, which is probably one of the most interesting but not surprising um, elements of the report, was that actually um, the Irish companies preferred um, in many cases to work with the UK um, or with the US. Um, I suppose the language is a factor, the geography between Ireland and the UK is a factor, but really I think with uh, Brexit, um, being, you know, quite categorically quite a mess. Um, I do think that the opportunities um, in the other markets are, are quite high. I particularly think Italy has come out very uh, strongly in the research. The reason for this is because obviously of the, the similarities between our countries, number one, um, but also um, more recently what's coming out is the fact that they're managing um, the virus issue, uh, seem to be managing it much more efficiently and effectively than other markets. It did, of course, start in uh, Italy, so one would assume that they were just going to be faster at the recovery than the other markets. So yes, I would encourage you to have a look at the, the markets, um, and in particular Italy. Business development, um, personnel, thin on the ground. Um, so 
oh, sorry, we need to go back. Yeah, business development personnel is thin on the ground. I felt um, that many um, of the founders and the CEOs of the businesses were, you know, trying to uh, do the business development. And I think that's pretty difficult and tricky. And I know there's an issue of a resource, but um, through the IBEC program, um, which is a European orientation program, you can get um, great candidates who speak um, these languages fluently and are able to be on the ground. Um, and then you can um, match that up with quite senior people, um, because that's one thing that did come up as well, talking to the businesses in France um, and, uh, and Spain and Italy, was the fact that actually they quite like to deal with people on a senior level, um, but they're happy to do that through a contact. So it could be, you know, um, a really, really um, highly thought of um, representative of the tour tourist the, the tourist industry in Italy, whom I'm sure Sara will help you to connect with. Um, again, Italy is the most opportunistic of the, of the target markets at this current time. Doesn't mean it's going to be like that forever, but um, it is and fintech and customer service areas so outside of travel um very much felt that fintech and customer service businesses um who are client companies of ei have um also got opportunities so recommended market development strategies um language and culture very high and i've touched on it quite a bit actually on the ground, um, which we've also touched on, and I've also mentioned what that means. So the blend of senior and more junior, um, the product. So how, what your product is, is the right uh, fit for the market? And only you can decide that. And uh, many of the client companies that I interviewed, you've got very different products um, pitching to very different audience. It's not all the same audience because you could be on the supplier or the buy side. Um, so it's very, very um, important to then identify the decision makers. Um, who are your competitors in the market? Because I certainly found that in France, for example, um, there were quite a number of competitors that could compete um, with the Irish client companies, um, which again makes it a bit more difficult there because the French, they're looking for those um, those ideas and they they consider themselves engineers um, from a very much an engineering background and uh, like to create their own um, environment. So um, it can be tricky, um, although that's not to say that if you have something, and I did speak to Air France and I spoke to, you know, lots of the big players in France and if there is a product um, that they are interested in, they will absolutely um, go for it, irrespective of, you know, where a company is from, how the TMs make buying decisions, and that's really, really uh, important as well. How do the target markets make buying decisions? Some of them are using RFPs, but many of them are just, you know, going on word of mouth. And this is what I found. And this is one of the reasons why I think it's very important to be on the ground, uh, because they're, you know, using their own contacts if they need something in fintech or they need something customer service, they just ring their own contacts and say, do you know some a company that's good at X? So it's very, very important to be present in the market, um, either of the three markets, if you want to uh, do well there. So one of the things that um, Enterprise Ireland uh, didn't ask me to do, but it just really happened naturally, um, many of the businesses that I spoke to um, in the markets, so uh, in the three markets, in the target markets, really talked a lot about um, the role of Enterprise Ireland and how useful Enterprise Ireland is in um, getting people together, getting the right businesses together. So the first thing is they have very, very strong relationships in the marketplace. Um, they support the client companies without being viewed as hard selling, which is really, really important. Um, that's one of the things that I do with the businesses that I work with. I, I vouch for them and I endorse their product, but I don't hard sell. Um, and therefore, it, it's a lot more um, plausible. And this is what Enterprise Ireland offers to you. Information sharing. So again, who are the people in the market? Um, who can help you in the market. The Irish consulate and embassy support, so particularly in France, 
um, businesses mentioned uh, that they very much enjoyed being at a presentation at the Irish Embassy or the Irish Consulate and um, they like that level of um, interaction uh, it's very high level executive um, you know di you know different from I suppose how you know we might uh, be in Ireland but they like that feeling of um, being special uh, in, in a special and feeling special in a special environment assistance is with seminars and meetings so obviously um, the Enterprise Ireland is fantastic at that communication and PR and really I think uh, the overriding is the excellent knowledge of the Irish tech scene and this really comes out um, you know with people like Moyer for example um, and Sarah who you know and Jane who just know their marketplaces inside out and know uh, the customers but also take so much time in developing the relationships in the marketplace so that's it for me if there are any questions I'm happy to take them okay thank you so much Sinead for this presentation which was very interesting and very informative as well it was great to hear some of the uh, opportunities for travel tech companies in those uh, in Southern Europe in those three markets which are which are large markets and important tourist destinations of course we also heard about the challenges the many challenges with COVID-19 being the number one challenge so but I think one of the key message uh, coming out from your presentation um, is that uh, prizes are always a tragedy uh, no matter what but you know they can also bring some opportunities maybe niche areas uh, the ones you mentioned during your presentation and uh, will be not easy, uh, but certainly innovation could be a good answer to to um, a crisis. And um, I think technology could really support, uh, you know, the, the recovery of the travel industry. Recovery that will be hard, for sure, but necessary, especially for in, this, in those three markets where, you know, the tourism industry, tourism sector is such an important sector uh, uh, for their economies. So um, we have actually a number of questions coming from the audience. So I'll start with the first one. If you're happy to answer them. Um, so the first one is, do you think Enterprise Ireland travel tech client companies are missing out by not taking advantage of their opportunities in those in these markets? I think yes and no. I think it again, it depends on the product and it depends on the client company. So for some businesses, it might make sense to do business in certain markets. But I definitely got the feeling that um, some of the, uh, you know, of the, these countries, the three countries were being discounted, which I definitely don't think should be the case. I, I really think that these countries need to be looked at um, seriously. And really, you know, the proof is in the pudding. All you have to do is, you know, look over your shoulder at Ryanair and see where Ryanair has the majority of its traffic. Um, you know, Italy is a massive market for Ryanair, as is Spain, as is France, and in that order. So there are fantastic opportunities in those markets and they shouldn't be overlooked. Um, you know, and the, the, it might be easier. I mean, certainly in my Ryanair days, we found it easier in Italy than we did in the UK. Um, on many different levels uh, to do business. So, you know, I've, I think it's important, but, well, you know, also the client companies are constrained by what product they have. Is it the right product for the market? Um, is it, you know, should it be in another market? But, that, you know, but I do think that these markets should not be overlooked. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Sinead. I've, I have another question coming in here. Um, are you seeing any new trends developing since you finished your research? That's a great question. That's a really good question. Um, yes is the answer to that. So I think initially when I started doing this project in March, as I said, we were just at the beginning of COVID um, and then COVID hit during doing this and I, I largely, we made the decision, Sarah and I, to go ahead and base this not on COVID, but to base this on what it will be like as we come out of COVID and the marketplaces there. And this is very much done in that way. What I think we're seeing now is that it it's a little bit more detrimental than we thought it was going to be initially. I don't think any of us realized 
you know, the full impact of it back in March um, or April or even May. And actually what's unfolding this month is actually becoming a lot more interesting because what we're seeing is there's a lot of hope because businesses are coming up with these COVID ideas, you know, to get the, um, or yeah, I don't know what to call them, COVID ideas in order to get the recovery back, which is incredible. And also airlines are being, and travel companies are being very pragmatic about this and saying, we have to continue. We've got to learn to live around this situation and we've just got to continue. So that is good news. I think that's really good news for us because the industry is not saying, no, this is terrible. The industry is saying, no, we've got to get up. We've got to go. We've got to live around this. And, you know, who's to know, you know, we could be living around this for many years and we will have some form of it for quite some time because now they're talking about putting screens on airplanes you know so dividing passengers um so you know it's going to it, it, it's going to change things in a way we're not going back to who we were last march yeah and i think it's, i think sorry i think it's interesting that you say that because i think everybody probably had the perception you know this time next year that the world will be back in order but it is kind of living with this new scenario as opposed to it being finished so hence Every, everything changes. Okay, thanks, yeah. Sinead. And you never know change. The change that is obviously uh, that COVID-19 is, you know, um, imposing to the, the to the industry it might be, you know, positive in the long run. There might be positive elements about it, you know. Uh, in the I think I think there will be, Sarah. There will be. I mean, it's such a change. It's the world is turned upside down. It can only be positive. So the, here's another good question, actually. Um, I'm reading it. Uh, most travel companies are on their knees, as we, as we know uh, at the moment. Uh, do they really want to talk about new opportunities and technology with Irish tech firms? That's another great question. So I think it depends. Um, I think it depends on the product that you have. Um, as I said earlier in the report, if you've got a product that's going to help them to generate revenue, um, then you're in a very strong position. If you've got a product that, you know, may help marketing um, to see them through this a marketing product, but also there are other, since doing the report, other areas have emerged because airlines are having difficulty with scheduling um, because they're having to, and scheduling is a very age old archaic system in airlines. And because they have to change overnight, you know, whether they cancel a flight or, you know, what they do with the flight. So scheduling is an area um, along with revenue because it's impossible at the moment to yield, manage, um, you know, how, how you're going to price a flight. And um, speaking to some airlines, they're looking at algorithms, uh, particularly in the US, um, they're looking at algorithms to um, decipher you know how so it is technology that's key to the recovery there is no question about that and all that airlines are looking at is technology i was speaking to an airline this morning and they've set up a, a think tank group an action group and what they've done is they've taken everybody from their commercial area um, one representative put them together and made them come up with um, ideas uh, that, that that are actionable. So not just pie in the sky ideas that are actionable and that they would then um, implement within 90 days. So to that, I say, you know, to the client companies, I say, well, you need to be talking to these airlines and talking to these people because they are doing things. Lufthansa has a special innovation hub. And they've come up with this travel insurance product for COVID, which is fantastic. So the airlines and the hoteliers and the OTAs, they are doing things. Um, so don't be afraid, you know, to contact them, even though, you know, it, it is a difficult time. But many of them are much more open to talking now with home working. They've got a little bit more flexibility and time. So I wouldn't shy away from talking to anybody that you need to talk to right now. Thanks, Sinead. Um, you spoke about having somebody on the ground and um, a question has come in here. Can, can hiring a veteran contact on the ground 
replace the need to open an office for having a team? Oh, definitely. Oh, absolutely. Um, you don't need an office. Uh, you know, that's becoming less and less um, important these days. I think somebody who's really good, who knows the market, so somebody, you know, in Spain who knows the market inside out and can really hit the ground running um, for any of the Irish tech firms is definitely the way to go. And I'm sure, I don't know uh, Jane and Sarah, but I'm sure you'd be able to help with identifying those people um, in the marketplace, who they could be, but uh, certainly, yeah, that is, and it's less costly as well. Um, that's why a lot of people work with me, is because they don't have to set up, US tech firms don't need to set up a European office, uh, they can just uh, do it through me. Um, and that's that. That's how we how I connect them with the travel companies. So it's very doable, and it is the it's the most cost effective way of doing it. And have you got a secret tip as to you know how to find that person in the market? If you were going to do this, if if you were an Irish company and you were going to enter a new market, you know where where do you best find these people, or where would your first port of call be? Well, I think if I were an Irish company, um, I'd first of all contact uh, Enterprise Ireland. Um, and if that wasn't yielding a result, uh, then I would try to, there's always somebody you can talk to. So for example, Sarah will have other contacts and that contact might lead to another contact. So, you know, it might take a few weeks to get to the right person. Um, but you eventually will, uh, there's no doubt about it. These people don't tend to, I have to say, they're not really out there, you know, uh, shouting about how great they are because they're, they're usually um, helping their clients to, to do business. Um, but I think that's where I would start. Yeah, that's, that's why it's so important to build a network of contacts in, in the market and we can help as in Prezion to, you know, uh, because we have this network of contacts uh, that can certainly be beneficial. I, from my experience, it's one of the hardest parts, finding a good person. Uh, yeah, and, and solely by, you know, talking to the, the people in, in the industry, uh, in the local market, that you can eventually find someone. So it's, it's, it's down to the network, really, of uh, contacts you have in the local market. So uh, now there's a question now about the um, hotel industry. Uh, you mentioned that COVID has led to many hotels spe speaking up their tech plans. Uh, what kind of changes have been put in place in light of this? Oh yeah, so it's mainly around contactless. Uh, that's what I found that um, hotels have decided to become contactless very, very quickly. Um, you know, another drive uh, that I noticed there is that um, people tend to be calling the hotels directly because they're nervous uh, through the OTAs that um, their journey will be cancelled and, and they want to know, they want to talk to the hotel and find out, are you open? Do you plan on staying open? You know, they want that direct relationship back. So um, I think that's, you know, good news for hotels. I'm not so sure it's great news for OTAs, but I think there's still a marketplace for everybody, uh, so it, sh it should be okay. Well, we could probably sit here for another, I don't know how long, um, answering questions, but I am conscious of the, the time. Sinead, thank you so much for that. That has been very, very insightful um, and a wealth of information. Um, so thank you very much for that. Um, and we will move on now to Maura Walsh, our senior vice president um, in our San Francisco office, who's going to share some insights and thoughts on the industry at the moment. Thanks, Jane. And thank you so much, Sinead. That was a wonderful presentation. And definitely, Sinead hit on some really important points there. Um, you know, and I would say even what we see overall as we talk to stakeholders across the world is there's a huge amount of innovation happening right now in travel. Um, you know, currently there's a huge focus on cost cutting, but many of our clients, they offer solutions where, you know, you, you do create cost efficiencies. And then obviously as demand continues to return, the focus then is on more revenue generating opportunities. And um, apart from that as well, I know Sinead touched on contactless 
Um, you know, definitely biometrics. I was part of Aviation Festival yesterday, their Innovation Day. Huge team throughout the day around biometrics, um, contactless. You know, really the journey um, as we think of it has changed. So, and, and I feel we have a breadth and depth of companies that have solutions. And even right now, Hangar 51 are doing their next cohort for their program. I know that several of you have been introduced to them. If you want an introduction, please let me know. IATA is working with plug and play and a whole new innovation series. They have five main themes. Um, I have pitched um, several companies into that program. So there's lots and lots happening in the industry around innovation. And I think we should not forget about that. And, and also don't be afraid to reach out to your contacts because they are talking to people. You know, we're definitely past the wave of when, you know, the industry was in disarray and it was advised, don't contact people. But really, you should be continuing to build relationships. And it's an industry based off relationships and obviously having a unique selling proposition. So I'm just going to talk a little bit. I want to just really touch on really quickly on just some of the Enterprise Ireland supports. If I can see next slide. So. Um, I just want to make sure that you're all super aware of this. I know it's a challenging time for many companies in our sector. Um, so the Sustaining Enterprise Fund, um, I just want to make sure that, you know, there's been changes made to this fund. And definitely, if you are in a position of need, I'd highly encourage you to contact your DA. So whoever your development, developmental advisor is um, in HQ or in other offices of Enterprise Ireland throughout Ireland, um, obviously, John McGill is our uh, is our main lead on travel, um, so I know that he would be the DA for many of you, many companies. But if you're in HPSU, it may be Anna Gordon or other people. So really, um, you know, there is now a non-repayable 50% um, of the of the package. So just to be really clear on that, that that funding is available, and really encouraging you to please, if you're in need of funding, please apply for that. Um, next slide. So I'm just going to really touch on a few things that we are seeing um, globally. Um, I'm just going to share one or two slides and maybe just really more talk about what's happening, you know, on the ground. So, you know, definitely, um, you know, it's been a bumpy ride. You know, there's there's no doubt that, you know, March and, and in particular, as we went into April as well, it was such a shock to the system, I think, for everyone. Um, you know, we definitely did see, if you look at this, and, and one piece and one tip I have for everyone is, the Boston Consulting Group, they have an amazing index of recovery um, with a particular um, focus on air search. And they have um, by country, by region, it's a super valuable tool just to see where recovery is coming from and what, what the weeklies look like. So definitely, you know, you know, I think definitely our low point, you know, was 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 late March and, and, and going into April. Things are recovering a little bit, but you know, really, it's a bumpy ride, and 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 that's one of the things that's kind of very challenging is, you know, the length of recovery. You know, at, at the start of this, you know, everyone thought maybe a year. You know, I think the the reality is it's probably three years, um, if not longer. Next slide, please. Um, and then touching on hotels a little bit as well. So again, you're kind of just seeing the same thing. Um, you know, but you know, the good news is you're seeing a you know a nice little you know kind of bounce back here. So you know, of course, still not at 2019 levels. Um, you know, and, and definitely what you're seeing as well that if you look at China, they're kind of the leaders in the recovery when it comes to this. And I think maybe that can that can be you know kind of something that has a little bit of ray of hope out there. Um, if you look at the Chinese market alone, um, they have all of their hotels, 90% of their hotels now open, and they're um, now seeing back to 2019 levels. Um, of course, that, that's different in the US. A lot of the hotels are open. Of course, the, you know, the occupancy is you know, down significantly, but they're seeing you know, definitely much better traction. Um, as you know, the kind of you know, the leisure and people wanting to get away and even just kind of you know, there's definitely a sense of, um, you know, just even going away for a few days. And then, of course, now as well, here you have 
more of an emphasis on longer term stays, so really looking at the monthly stays. Um, so next slide. And then I, I think the main thing is just really just touching on some of these, you know, in particular. So if you look at car rental, for example, um, Expedia just came out in the last few days that they're seeing that car rental is returning 2x faster than air. So car rental is really one of those things that's kind of, um, as you think of, as, as, as things recover and people are going on journeys, that that's one of, that is coming kind of bouncing back. Um, you know, airports right now, their main focus is on innovation. You know, obviously they are going through a lot of pain, but their main focus is how can we make things better? So if you have any kind of solution that really can help, you know, they're really focused on the customer journey and how do you make sure that the customer feels safe? Because at the, at the middle of all this, and what's really key is customer sentiment, you know, that will drive the recovery. Obviously, a vaccine is the number one thing that would help secure that. But beyond that, and you know, we may be looking at another few months, if not a year for that, any ways in which we can make the customer feel safer. So really, airports are really key to doing that. Um, so they are looking at really all of their systems and also they're also looking at security as well because you know, as Sinead mentioned earlier, fraud is also an issue right now. So definitely looking at biometrics, contactless journey. Um, so really anything that makes the customer feel better as they go through. Um, the interesting thing is if you look at cruises, you know, their bookings for next year have not changed. So that's, I don't know, it's an interesting thing. Um, but you know, I think it's too really early to, to say what's gonna have to develop there. Um, hotels. Hotels traditionally have been super slow to innovate. It's such a fragmented market. And now actually you're seeing them really look at ancillary seriously for the first time probably ever. So I think this is, you know, back again to, the, this is really a time of when, you know, the people that are in these positions right now, they're all focused on recovery. And then what are new um, revenue opportunities that we can, as, as demand returns, we're in a better position to offer more to our customers and to actually make sure that, you know, other players are maybe not just taking that business away from us. Um, events and attractions, you know, even though that space is down so much right now, I think the one thing that people are forgetting that there is people still do leisure travel. So even if they're not, you know, traveling far away, they're still actually going to attractions in those areas. So I think that's not to be forgotten. And I think definitely be, as you look at how ancillary has changed from relying less on car rental and baggage, stuff like events, attractions, and other kind of newer ancillary plays, you know, airlines and even hotels are more interested in that right now as well. Um, you know, similarly as well, OTAs, one of their pain points that they've identified and Sinead identified as well is contact centers. You know, we, we know that Ireland has some really great um, um, companies in that space. So, you know, really looking at, um, you know, and also that would be a huge cost cutting exercise for the likes of airlines. You know, they've already laid off a significant amount of, of staff. So, you know, you're not gonna have the same issue with unions um yeah so and then just really focus on airlines as well um right now a lot of them are cost cutting but it's all about innovation so you know how can you help reduce our costs and then as demand returns again looking at adding new services across you know ancillary you know better being able to serve customers through personalization and and through other mechanisms so while recovery really looks you know to be another year to maybe three years out you know people are still actively innovating in the space you know i know one huge brand that's actually going to go into travel in a deeper way so you know not only do you have the existing players but there's newer players actually coming into the market that people don't even know about yet so you know you know usually any time of great crisis is also a time of opportunity and i just want to hit home about that do not be afraid to reach out to your contacts and just even ask them how they're getting on you know it's interesting you know that um you know many of them are so willing to talk right now because they're also actively looking for solutions and we can help so i think that's something that we should um remember 
So um, I think that's it for me. There might be another slide. Is there, um, Denise, or questions and answers? So I don't know if anyone, I'm not seeing the questions, um, but I will just touch on um, IMW, International um, Markets Week. That is happening in a few weeks time. In, in early October, and that's when you will have the opportunity to meet with, you know, everyone from the global travel tech team. Um, so people from our offices in Singapore to Australia, um, obviously me, Sarah, and Jane will be part of that, and, and others. So definitely, if you want to talk to us about the opportunities that are happening in markets and what we're seeing and for us to review and, and go through um, what you're doing and how we can help, we, are, we would be delighted to meet. So that's on between the 5th and the 9th of October. And then um, you should have got an email from us on that. If not, you can email support at enterpriseireland.com. Um, so I'm, I don't know if there's any questions, Jan, Jane or Sarah? Yeah, I, I, I can see a question. Uh, one has just come in here. What kind of biometric contactless solutions have you seen being developed? Well, I know actually even if we if we look at our own capability, Dayon, who's a leader in biometrics, they've really got into this space and I think they are a very compelling solution. So they recently developed a deal with Denver International Airport and that soft launch is actually happening today. Um, you know, there's... Um, you know, another one or two companies in the space as well. So even yesterday, there was a pitch competition um, that was run by Focus Right and Aviation Festival, and the winner of that was a, a facial biometrics solution. You know what I mean? So there is already strong competition in the space from market leaders, and actually Dayon would be one of the market leaders. Um, so, you know, definitely would encourage you to talk to them. Um, but yeah, it's really, you know, and even if you look at, you know, there's some other existing players, if you think of the US, if you even think of, you know, the likes of a solution like Clear. Um, um, but yeah, there's definitely movement in that space. And that's really where all the investors are looking at. It's really hot right now. Like, like airports and airlines now realize that recovery is going to take longer because the vaccine is just taking longer. So what, what security did to 9-11? This is going to do to biometrics, hygiene, contactless, touchless. Um, you know, they are really the main themes driving, um, in particular, airports and airlines right now. Okay. Uh, there's another question, Moira. Um, what is industry sentiment towards potential future lockdown in general, COVID uncertainty? Well, I, I think actually that's one of the biggest challenges. So when this first started, I started a travel task force here with um, players from airports, airlines, like OTAs, like Airbnb, Google. So we meet bi-weekly. I, actually, at the start, we met weekly. We thought, oh, this would just last three months. And then, it, you know, we continue now. So now we meet, we meet bi-weekly. And from the very start, the consensus was, in particular from airports, that we really need a global, um, you know, like there needs to be something that actually people come together and, you know, really it's more about federal, federal governments coming together and creating, like what's happening is a lot of bilaterals between countries, but really, really what we need is just one global voice that really speaks to this is what's happening. I think one of the issues, and you can even see that if you look at you know, there has been dips in the last few weeks because, of course, cases unfortunately on the rise again. And, and the unclarity around where it's safe to go and what is what are the quarantines that has led to a lot of uncertainty and has just kind of, you know, um, the return basically lag a, li a little bit because of that. So definitely in the industry between the key stakeholders, um, there's a huge desire. And some of them are doing that together and working together, but then there's issues because, you know, you may have one airline in a certain country just say, we're going to test everyone. You know what I mean? But their preference is that there's consensus globally. Um, so then that would be quick, you know, you know, a quicker return to travel. So, you know, there's, you know, there's definitely talk of immunity passports 
um, you know, having to get tested, you know, to go to Hawaii right now, you have to get tested before you get on the flights and the two hours beforehand. Um, that might be part of our new reality. Okay. Thank you very much, Maura. We've come to the end of um, our, our time. So I would like to thank um, our speakers. I would like to thank Sarah, Moira, um, and Sinead for joining today for the great presentations. And I would like to thank everybody who has registered for the webinar. Um, lots of food for thought, um, lots of ideas. And I think that the main message is Despite the challenging times, there are definitely opportunities out there and buyers, um, buyers are, are waiting to hear about new solutions and new technologies and how companies, everybody is reinventing themselves um, at the moment. If you haven't signed up for International Markets Week, look in your inbox. Please sign up if you'd like to schedule a meeting with us. And as I said at the beginning, we will be sending out the presentation to everybody. Um, with the content um, from today's presentations. So thank you very much, everybody, and have a fantastic evening. Thanks thank a lot. You, I just noticed one question, sorry, about a question about car rental. We may actually do a, a deep dive into car rental recovery in a few weeks, so stay tuned for that. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank today. you. Bye, Sarah, thank everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.